Welcome to season 10 of the Community Podcast. This season is brought to you by Safe Source Africa in collaboration with Wings and the Philanthropy for Climate Movement. In this episode, we take you all the way to South Africa. We host Louise Driver, the Executive Director at IPASA. IPASA is the Independent Philanthropy Association of South Africa. Louise is an award-winning businesswoman and fundraiser in Africa and globally. Today, she'll be sharing about IPASA's journey in the philanthropy for climate movement and the international philanthropy commitment on climate change. You're most welcome. Would you briefly speak about IPASA and the work that you do in South Africa and Africa? Yeah, so we um, we are an in independent philanthropy network of um, private philanthropy organizations, so mainly uh, private charitable foundations. Uh, we've got a membership of about 50 foundations as well as organizations that support the work of grant makers in South Africa. So mm -hmm. our members are all either um, based in South Africa or investing in, in South Africa. And IPASA's main role is to provide um, support to our members in terms of um, providing knowledge around um, funding practice and funding priorities as well as to organize events where we bring our funders together to learn and share with each other and connect and ultimately to promote collaboration in the, in the funding sector. Uh, beyond our members, we also try to promote philanthropy throughout South Africa, and we, um, we share that knowledge around, around funding with any funders in South Africa. We also um, promote knowledge sharing across other philanthropy networks in Africa, like the African Philanthropy Forum and African Philanthropy Network, East African Philanthropy Network, as well as our international um, philanthropy networks such as Wings, Philea, et cetera. Um, so that's a real short synopsis of, of the work that we do. Wow, uh, thanks for sharing that. One of the things that uh, stood out as you spoke was the collaborative nature of IPASA, uh, which is in line with why we're having this conversation today. Mm -hmm. So in the wake of the climate crisis that's before us, organizations, foundations, and givers of all kinds have taken the proactive approach uh, to solving this climate crisis. They're giving their time, their expertise, and their resources to address this. And one of the ways they're responding to it is by joining the movement uh, for, of philanthropy for climate. Uh, yeah. could, you, could you share with us Ipasa's journey? How did you come to make the decision to join this movement? So uh, we, um, obviously, we're always trying to progress our members to follow best funding practice and to be aware of funding priorities, both locally and globally. So climate change, obviously, the last couple of years has become a prominent issue. And yeah. in order to, to educate and support our members with that, as well as funders in general in South Africa, we launched a climate change uh, fund a support initiative about a year and a half ago where we ran a series of workshops to educate funders about the, the extent of, of the climate crisis and how it intersects their work no matter what funding sector they're in. Um, we also developed a, a, a climate crisis funded toolkit which is an online toolkit, which is available to our members, but available to any funders. It's on our website, so it's globally available, um, which helps them whatever stage of their climate journey they're on to, to progress them, themselves. So it contains everything from the intersectionality you know, nature of, of the climate change to how to communicate it, to how to um, how it can influence your operations, your endowments, et cetera. Um, and then carrying on from the initiative last year, the, this year we moved into creating um, climate change case studies among some of our members who are at different stages of their climate journey. And those uh, case studies will be shared next month with, with all our members and the philanthropy sector in general to try and motivate people to be part of, um, well, to, to, to embark or progress um, their climate change strategies. And... Um, so as part of that, we've been a member of, of WINGS for many years. And when and last year when WINGS was developing the International Climate Pledge, um, climate pledge, we we uh 
I, I was part of the task team to develop that pledge. And then um, we were chosen as um, an ambassador for, um, for the pledge for, for South Africa. So we have been encouraging our members to sign it. And we are also trying to, um, yeah, to, 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 to promote it in South Africa. We haven't, uh, we've only already promoted among our members so far, but ideally we'd, we'd, we'd want to try um, promote it for the whole country. Oh, um, so as you were speaking about um, how you are collecting, not in a sense collecting, but mobilizing uh, other South African foundations, organizations to get on board with this movement, uh, something came to mind. Would you like to speak to how um, philanthropic partnerships are helping to address the climate crisis, specifically in the South African context. You spoke about the intersectionality, like some people tend yeah. to see their work as independent of the climate crisis. Maybe since we're focusing on education, we don't necessarily have to look at mm -hmm. this whole climate crisis trend. Mm -hmm. So how do you get them from that point and even just get them to partner with you in advancing this? So, you know, I must mention that, that 98% of our members are really just at the very beginning of 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 of, of, um, of addressing how they're going to how they're going to work within the, the, this climate change space. So it's um, so what you're talking about is right far the other end, and most of them aren't there yet, and that's because a lot of a lot of the uh, philanthropy organisations are quite traditional. So it, it involves getting the board aware, educated, and buy it, most important, a whole bunch of set. So we still yeah. very much at that stage with, with most of our members. Um, the, the, the one member which is really helping us a lot and has helped us since we launched our initiative a year and a half ago is the African Climate Foundation. And they mm. are very um, active in South Africa as well as the whole of Africa. And they've been helping us uh, develop this, this, this initiative. And um, but we at the moment have identified consultants who um, are working with us to develop these case studies and who we'd like to be able to provide support to our members to to move further along with their strategies but our biggest issue is funding so it's really hard to get funding for this type of work people want to fund the climate change projects but they don't mm -hmm. want to fund a philanthropy network in order to enable um, those climate change uh, funders to, to fund the climate change projects. Wow. So if we were funded, we'd have a catalytic effect because, uh, and a multiplier effect, because if, if we have funding, we could reach 50 different members, you know? Mm. So um, we really have been struggling to get money in South Africa. We are now applying internationally for, fu for funding to try um, further this aim. So what you're saying, we're very limited at the moment. We, we do what we can, but we have a very limited budget for this. Um, yes. We have got great plans to develop a local South African climate change funder pledge to be able to um, provide support to all funders in South Africa in, in terms of um, consultative um, sessions to to help them develop plans. Um, yeah, but but these are all something which which um, yeah we we need funding for first. Yeah, I can definitely imagine and it's hard to mention philanthropy without you know talking finances the funding that's actually needed to implement this work and advance the change that we need to see in our communities um what something else that came up was um philanthropy is manifested in different ways the different ways of expressing it at gives us we zeroed in on three which is you give of your time, your talent, and treasure. So while money and funds uh, would be the most dominant channel through which philanthropy is expressed, are there any other forms of giving you're seeing at this point in the growing movement of philanthropy for climate? It could be South um, Africa or even just globally. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, I'm, I'm, you're saying other than than funding. Is there any other? So I'm not I'm not totally clear about what you're asking. Uh, other than the funding, is that some other form or way of giving that has been 
uh, channeled to advance uh, philanthropy for climate. The, if I'm to just give an example, I had a conversation with um, a team that's doing the 10 in 10 challenge, the Gigaton challenge, mm -hmm. where we tackle, you know, one specific um, continental global crisis at a time. So one mm -hmm. of the things that were um, advancing was climate change. So what they do is they maybe collect certain, um, they're reducing emissions one at a time. Uh, so what we're doing is collecting certain, I, th I think they called it food waste. Yeah, it's actually food waste. <laughs> they call it's they were collecting food waste, and from it, they would um, produce manure or and then give that back to the community while at the same time reducing the emissions. So I asked them beyond this, where do you get the money to do this? How do you end up, you know, con making this contribution? In a sense, so they, but these well, are the funders itself are doing this. The funders. Yeah. So we, you know, we, 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 we not a funder. So, you know, so some of them are doing this type of work. Um, and that's what yeah. we're gathering the case studies through to see what, what type of work they're doing. But he passed itself doesn't fund climate change work. We are funding enabling and the facilitation of funders in order to become aware and take action within climate change so mm -hmm. I, I couldn't at this stage tell you there's there's the, the, there's three of our members who are quite advanced in terms of their their, their climate strategies and mm -hmm. they are doing numerous things um within the space but you would need to uh, chat to them directly to see see what, oh. what what they're doing yeah yeah because we we just yeah we're the intermediary as such we don't what we fund is the facilitation not um not projects yeah but, but i'm also learning um and really just what i knew about ipasa is you provide that space for these conversations to happen. Yes, exactly. Share this knowledge. Exactly. So we provide it. is giving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. our work is 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 constantly awareness, education, advocacy, um, constant, you know, knowledge sharing, uh, um, connecting where possible, um, yeah. you know, really trying to get get funders to understand the urgency to and 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 to react and to respond and um but yeah so th that that's our work how they actually what they do you know is is independent of uh, yeah yeah i mean mm -hmm. We will say these are the type of projects, you know, adaption is key in South Africa, mitigation is a huge thing, it's quite difficult, adaption is key, and, you know, these are examples of amazing, uh, of funders who've done amazing adaption work, and, um, you know, uh, these are the kind of things you could do within your organization, within your endowment, but what they actually do going forward we don't always know and that's why we're doing these case studies to try find out from some of our key members to find out what they are doing and share that with the others yeah um so far i know it's from the conversation so far you are really at the beginning stages of this work mm -hmm. but i'm just mm -hmm. curious to to know if there are anything that anything if there's anything that you're learning on this journey that you'd like to share with maybe grassroots foundations back here in Uganda or to all our listeners all over the world and foundations, community foundations that would like to join this movement or even just tackle this pro problem of climate uh, of climate change? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the biggest things is the mindset change because many of them think it's it's been going on for a long time, there's enough money to solve it, or it doesn't affect us, or it's, um, it, yeah, or we too small to make a difference. So it really is a, um, it really is a, 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 a a, a difficult one because there is so much that actually uh, that philanthropy can do, but often they, they they don't think of it as their their problem or what, what something they can do. So that is um, that is something quite quite critical is that um, everybody can play a role. Everyone has to. The, the problem is so huge. Everyone has to. Um, it's 
you know, I, I think the other thing is that philanthrop the philanthropy sector can play a pivotal role in, in funding the work needed to tackle change. They can take risks that corporate funding and government funding can't do. do. They um, they can experiment. They can, um, they can, you know, really try seed interesting experiments in innovation and climate change. Um, they can also, they, they can incentivize collaboration. They, they, they can find out what brings people to the table and actually bring people to the table, such as what IPASA does. So, but really, um, a philanthropy, a private philanthropy, is it's 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 society's most flexible capital, and so it really should be funding where government and corporate can't fund, and and in, in the climate change space, because um, we have the, the the benefit of being able to fund high risk, early stage, politically sensitive kind of long term work that other capital can't. And I, th I think that's a key message: is that philanthropy's role in combating the climate crisis is absolutely key because they can do something which all the other groups of funders can't can't do um you know and so this for me that would be the message is that it's absolutely key that philanthropy as a whole the philanthropy is, oh, get, get gets involved um yeah so philanthropy is important in filling the gaps that other kinds of Funders and capital yeah. working. It's not even a gap. I mean, they also provide catalytic capital. So they can provide um they they can provide grants that catalyze public and private sector solutions. So mm -hmm. it's you know, so it's not gaps because that almost underplays the, the vital role of philanthropy. Um, it's that if they provide seed funding or um, experimental in funding for innovation within the sector, that can then lead once they've experimented and validated, then the public and private sector can come in. You, I mean, the, yeah, the corporate sector and government, et cetera. So there's, um, yeah, it, they can also play a great advocacy role because again, they don't have to report to a, a corporate board or shareholders or the government. So they they are free to to um, play that that strong advocacy role. Wow. Um, are there any final thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, and really, it could be lessons that you're learning on how even in the African context, you're responding to this, how we could do better. I know you've stated that um, mm. through emphasizing the role of philanthropy in this, but just any final thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, yeah, I would just say that really uh, that philanthropy service organizations such as the PASA play an absolutely critical role in influencing climate change funder support and that um, that there needs to be, you know, that, that there needs to be support for this type of work in order to really have a multiplier effect and to make sure that everyone is um everyone is 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 responding to, to the climate crisis through through their work through their investments through their operations um in order to in order to really um, effectively tackle the problem thank you louise um i know at some point you mentioned the africa climate foundation it's interesting mm -hmm. that we'll be hosting them in an episode right after you. So oh, fantastic. Okay. We're happy to even just learn uh, from them and listening on what they're doing in that space. So yeah. thank you so much uh, for sharing your time with yeah. us and yeah. for sharing your thoughts. And is there anything that you had in mind as you got into this conversation that I maybe didn't prompt you to say? <laughs> uh, or do you feel like you've said what you yeah. thought that you had in your mind? Yeah, no, I did, yeah, thank, thank you for this opportunity to, um, to discuss this important issue with you. Thanks.